to say thank you, Lord. Keep popping. I have come to give back to you. Oh, yes, I have come to say thank you, Lord. Can I get a witness up in here tonight? Sing, I've come to give back to you. What is your agenda? What did you come here to do? Say! Lift those hands. To say thank you, Lord. Is anybody grateful here tonight? I've come to give back to you. I have come oh, to give back to you. Yeah, yeah. I've come to say thank you, Lord.
Praise the Lord. We thank the worshipers for sharing with us earlier on as they shared the word of God in song. And right now we want to share the word of God in word now. Hallelujah. At this point in time, this is Reverend Dr. David Jackson, Senior Pastor of the Prayer and Praise, Open Bible Church, Koki, Trinidad and Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you as the Lord has shared with me today. I want you to bow with me for prayer as we begin to get ready for the word today. Father, we thank you. I thank you right now for being our God. I thank you for the God being the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for making our way in the wilderness and our river in the desert. And even now, even now, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just have your own will and way by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And as we share in this deliverance service, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move today. Touch somebody who's been listening under, who's under the sound of my voice for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Today I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verses 6 to 8. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 6 to 8. And I want to share with you on a topic, convolutions of the call. Convolutions of the call. In other words, it's complicated. Convolutions of the call. It's complicated. Hmm. Let's read from 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verses 6 to 8. Chapter 30, verses 6 to 8. It reads like this. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Hmm. It's complicated. The convolutions of the faith. In chapter 29, we see, 1 Samuel chapter 29, we see David journeying three days to help a friend of his, a newfound friend, Akish. Ah, boy. And Akish was a Philistine king. And David was there in the land that Akish had given him, in Ziklag. However, he journeyed 55 miles, three days journey, to go and assist Akish in a war against Israel, led by Saul, the soon-to-be fallen king. What could make a man journey three days to join a friend in a fight? Hmm. Oh, it's complicated. It's complicated. There are many convolutions. What would bring David to this place? Hmm. Well, we see firstly in 1 Samuel chapter 27 verses 1 to 4. Let's read 1 Samuel 27, verses 1 to 4, and it says here, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day at the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the lands of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair me 
to seek me any more in my cause or in any cause of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose, and he passed over with the six hundred men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Moak, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail the Carmelites, Nabal's wife. And it was told so that David was fled to Gath. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath. And he sought no more after him. Hmm. David was fleeing his former leader. His former leader was seeking his life. So David had to leave his homeland. He made a decision to leave his homeland and journey into the territory of the Philistines so that Saul would no longer pursue him. It's complicated. It's complicated. Huh. The Philistines at the time in chapter 29 Verses 1 and 2. Let's look at chapter 29, verses 1 and 2. It says here, Now the Philistines gathered together all their armies to Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the Lord of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed on in the rare reward with Akish. Hmm. So here it is. They were at the city of Aphek. They came to fight here. And David was engaging in war. He was fighting his own nation. He was fighting against his own nation. He had joined forces with the enemy of Israel at the time. Hmm. My God, it's complicated. How did I end up here? You ask yourself, it's complicated, Pastor. How did I end up here? Pastor, I never for once thought that I'd end up here. How did I end up here? Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you who is Akish. Who is this new friend, Akish, that David made friends with? Huh. Akish was the son of Moak, and Moak was the king of Gath. If you go back in history, you will remember the account where David conquered a gentleman by the name of Goliath. And Goliath of Gath was the champion of Gath who stood against the children of Israel and who defied the very God of Israel. And God used David in his boyhood with his faith and his love for the Lord. The Lord used David to destroy the champion Goliath of God hmm. with a sling and, three, and some small stones. A sling and some small stones. David destroyed the life of Goliath, who was a champion of God. And here it is, a number of years later, he finds himself as a man in the company of Akish, the grandson of the king of God, fighting against the very people that he once fought for. Oh my God, it is complicated, ladies and gentlemen. It's complicated. <laughs> David and his army, they gathered at Afek to fight. But the verses subsequently will show that even though Akish was happy to have David, David and his men were asked to not fight with the Philistines at that battle on that fateful day. 
That brings me to my first point. You may have befriended an enemy because huh, of certain circumstances. You have taken on the friendship of this enemy of your people with good intention. It was not that you started off that way. You say, Pastor, I was not always this way. I was faithful to the Lord when I was a boy. I was faithful to the Lord when I was a, a child. I was faithful to the Lord. But now I'm grown and I ask myself, how did I get here? And ladies and gentlemen, many times I'm certain David may have asked himself the very same question. But circumstance, his intention was good. However, as we saw in 1 Samuel 27, 1-4, he had to leave because of survival. Saul was seeking his life. So he had to leave for survival reasons. Next, he was not welcomed by his own people. Hello, are you in a situation where you're not feeling welcome by your own? The people that you expected to welcome you? Are you in a situation where you're not feeling welcome by your own? Hmm. The situation that David was in at the time, as is seen in 1 Samuel 27, 1-4, there was no opportunity for growth for him. He was busy running away for his life. And his family was growing at the same time. His leadership and his army began to grow. So he was running away. There was no opportunity for growth and multiplication. So he had to leave. He made a strategic decision to leave. Sometimes we make those types of strategic decisions because we don't feel welcome anymore where we are. We don't feel welcome anymore. The feeling of welcome was not there anymore. And instead, it was replaced by rejection. Hmm. Survival, hostility, limited opportunities, and the spirit of rejection. Ah, boy. The spirit of rejection can overtake you at times. You keep trying, and everything you do, you keep trying, and it's rejected. It's not welcome. So you made a decision, I'm leaving. And you left and went into the enemy territory. Then, what happened to David, as we saw in verse 27, chapter 27, sorry, verses 1 to 4? He became tired of the chase. Look at somebody and say, hey, I feel tired. I feel tired of the chase. I feel tired of the ridicule. I feel tired of the destructive criticism. Not constructive criticism. You know. Destructive criticism. I feel tired of the destructive criticism. I feel tired of being put down all the time. This is a place where I have hoped to add value I gave my all. I hope to have that. But I was rejected. I'm tired of trying. So you say to me, Pastor, I'm tired. And often, like David, when he became tired of the chase, he made a decision. This chase will only stop if I'm out of their sight. 
So he left his homeland so that Saul would no longer chase him because it's out of his jurisdiction. But to do so, he made friends with an enemy of Israel. Hmm. He went into enemy territory and made friends with the enemy. So the enemy of the enemy became my friend. The enemy of my enemy became my friend. Ah, I want to tell you something in my next point. Even if some of your new friends are willing to ignore the fact that they were once your enemy, they have a wider circle and their wider circle are keeping an eye on you. They know you are not a Philistine. You are an Israelite. You run into enemy territory. And your new friends, the enemy of my enemy, became my friend. But even though some of them are willing to ignore the fact that they were once your enemy, their wider circle are keeping an eye on you. You may be living in Philistine country and supporting the Philistine way. But you are an Israelite and cannot escape your identity. God is calling you. You are a child of God. You cannot escape your identity. You are not a Philistine. Except you need to step out from there. Stop aligning with the enemies of God and pulling down the work of God. You want to show them how much you're on their side now. So you're joining them in their laughter and scoffing on the work of God and the children of God. You're joining them as they bad talk every preacher from heaven to hell. You join them as they speak evil of the things of God. You join them as they scoff at the things of God. Because you want them to feel that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Hmm. But they are wider circle know that you are not a Philistine. And they will insist that you not fight with them. Come away. Stop aligning with them. Stop aligning with them. You do not belong there fighting against the children of God with the Philistine army. They were fighting against a soon fallen king, a spiritually fallen king. They were going to fight against him. So, but let me tell you, God is saying to you, stop aligning with the enemy. Get out of that circle. If you do not get out of that circle, God will have them throw you out. Get out of there. You are not a Philistine. You do not belong there. Come out from among them and separate yourself. Is what God is saying today. Separate yourself. Thirdly, it's complicated, Pastor. It's complicated. You need to be in tune with God even in your season of difficulty to avoid your ziklag being burned down. You see, when David went across to the Philistine land and befriended King Achish, Akish gave him a land called Ziklag. And David was living in Ziklag with his family and his army, his small army, and their families. And whilst they were in Ziklag, David had become so comfortable in the land of the Philistines. And we had a scenario, an affect where the Philistines were going to war. 
And so David went to support his friend. He went out there to support his newfound friend Akish to fight against the children of God. But let me tell you something. If David had sought the direction of God about whether he should go to Aphek, the Lord would have answered him correctly. And he would have remained at home in Zikar and avoided the invasion of the, of the Amalekites. That invasion would have been avoided because he and his army were formidable men. They were valiant men. Nobody could invade Ziklag with David there. But David did not inquire of the Lord then. And so Ziklag was burnt to the ground. Oh my God. But let me tell you something. Even if you have left the face of God because of how complicated things were. You say, Pastor, it's complicated. It's not as simple as it seems. I didn't end up here because I wanted to. That pastor treated me bad. That church treated me bad. They only were after my money. They were after what I had to offer. But they were not really after me. There was no concern about me. Pastor, they stole from me. Pastor, my homeland did not present opportunities for me. My homeland, I was treated with scorn. I was tired, Pastor. I was tired of the chase. I had to leave because I was tired of the chase. So you didn't inquire of the Lord. But I want to tell you today, even though your zikrag is on fire, the Lord will not turn his back on you. Even though you have gone with the enemy, the Lord is calling you, and you were probably flicking around doing something different today. But the Lord, while you were looking at something else, had you come right now and tune into this broadcast. So that you can be confronted with the word of God. It's complicated, Pastor. You say it's complicated. And I'm not here to judge you. It may be complicated. You may have left God because of a survival reason. You may have left God because there was hostility in the place of God. You may have left God because there was rejection. You may have left God. But he's saying it's time to come back home. When the enemy had invaded David's land, when the enemy had invaded him, the Lord still loved this man and was waiting for him to come to him. You see, he would have informed David, stay home. You see, if he was listening to the Lord at the time, he would not have lost his personal space and his personal items and the personal loved ones. You see, we can be in the world but not live like the world. You can live in this world but have the lifestyle of heaven. 1 John chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 says it this way. 1 John chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father of God abideth forever. Hmm. We can be in the world, but live the principle of heaven. You could be in Philistine country because of your circumstance, but not live like a Philistine. Hmm. And David, on experiencing great loss, 
on the invasion of his home, he turned to the Lord his God. He sent a message to get the priest, bring the ephod, and the he sent a message to get the priest. He didn't allow the spirit of pride to overtake him. He didn't allow his ego to rule. But he said, send for the priest. Send for the ephod. In his lowest moment, when he asked him, so how did I get here? He chose to call on the Lord his God again. Hallelujah. So, madam, you may be in a strange land. You may have distanced yourself from God's people because of a bad experience. And now you are dwelling in a land that you once fought against. You were driven there by legitimate challenges. But you are not to remain there anymore. Your home tongue is on fire because you have abandoned God. Come back and call back the man of God. Call for Abiyah the priest today. God is ready and willing to take you in. He is ready and willing to give you fresh direction. He is ready and willing to restore you. He is ready and willing to restore your joy. But he's saying to you today, come back home. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with Pastor today. Say, Pastor, it's complicated. David's situation was very complicated. But and it became so complicated that it eventually resulted in his city being on fire. You may say to me, Pastor, my city is on fire today. It's burning down. I've been invaded. I've been violated. But God is saying, come back home. I want to pray for someone who's under the sound of my voice, who's been violated. You have been chased. You had to make decisions. That resulted in you being in the land of the Philistine, in the land of sin, in a land that is not for you. And you say, Pastor, I'm ready to come back home. I want to pray with you tonight. Hallelujah. Father, you see that brother or that sister. You see that boy and that girl. Father, Lord Jesus, who would have heard this word and have decided that even though it's complicated, I want to surrender my life to Jesus again. I want to come back home. I want to call for the ephod so that I will hear God's voice again. Father, I pray right now that you hear and answer that prayer. Lord, I pray for those who may be oppressed of the devil today. Father, Lord, hear and answer the prayer of deliverance for them. Lord, I pray for all those who are struggling with vices in their mind. Hear and answer their prayer today for freedom. Lord Jesus, for he whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Set your people free today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. If you are under the sound of my voice today, I want you to look at the number on our screen. And I want you to give us a call. Your situation may be complicated. There may be convolutions. But there's nothing too hard for the Lord today. Come back home. And remember... Eternity is much longer than here. This is Reverend Dr. David Jackson of the Cokie Open Bible Prayer and Praise Chapel, Cokie in Trinidad and Tobago, saying, I love you. And remember, eternity is much longer than here. Come 
back home. God bless you.